So now we're going to go up and do the same thing with our actual weave pattern. So I'm just going to come up and turn the weave pattern on and select it and do the same exact thing. So I'm going to come down to geometry, go to edge loop, go to the panel loops area, change my thickness for this one to do 0 0.05, change the elevation to zero. I'm going to change the uh, bevel again. So I'm going to hit reset and just drag one up, drag another one, another one, and get rid of that center one. And then kind of adjust these curves really quick. So you end up with something like this. There we go. And now I'm just going to hit panel loops. And so you can see now you have that kind of lattice work um, being generated now as a panel loop. Now you can inflate and kind of you know sculpt on these after they're generated so I'm not really too concerned about the kind of thinness that's happening along here um, or some of the overlap that's happening in the other areas. So now I'm just going to hold control, clear my mask and then do the same thing, control click to remove that um, inner portion that we don't need anymore and then going down to the modify topology and doing a delete hidden. So now we just have the panel loops um, visible. So that looks pretty good. Now I'm actually going to come in and start adding the actual uh, gem that will be in the center here. So I'm going to come back up to this original polysphere and you can see it's visible and it's literally almost in the same spot. So I'm going to take that quick and I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. So I'm coming down to the size underneath deformation and just scale it down a tiny bit and then I'm going to use the transpose line so I'm going to come up and hit move or hit W on my keyboard while holding shift I'm going to draw a transpose line out and just holding shift drag it forward until that gem kind of comes out just like so. So I kind of want it you know just nestled into that framework of the actual uh, pendant there so something like that and then I'm going to go back to draw and I'm just going to divide this up a few times just so it starts to look smooth again. So something like that. So now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add a different matte cap um, to this actual jewel so it kind of separates it from the actual framework. This is uh, totally optional. So to do that I'm going to come over here and click on the material and there's a bunch of different matte caps you can download from the actual PixelLogic site. Um, this one that I'm going to choose right now is called Green Glass and this is just off of the PixelLogic matte cap library. So I'm just going to have that selected there. And right now as you can see when I selected it all the subtools kind of updated with this green glass and I only want it on the center uh, gem part I don't really want it on the framework. So I need to actually apply this matte cap to that subtool. To do that, I'm going to come up here and turn on M up here, which is actually the matte cap or the material channel. And then I'm going to go over to color and do fill object. And so what that did, if you notice over here in your subtool palette, is that the colorize icon came on. And now if I switch this matte cap to back to matte cap gray, you can see that the gem still has that matte cap applied to it, while the rest is reverted back to the matte cap gray. So if I wanted to see the gem again with just matte cap gray on it, I can come over here and just turn off colorize and now you can see it as its actual object. So you can bake in material information into the colorize layers of a sub subtool object as well, which is pretty nice for creating you know, different elements of uh, style and variation on pieces that you're working with. So now that has a little bit more of a gem type feel to it or a uh, dichroic uh, glass kind of look. So now I'm going to go through and kind of clean up our uh, borders here and then the actual framework. So first we're going to go to the borders and we're actually going to come down here and use these new features in ZBrush 405 which are these polish features here. So if we just did like a normal polish before 4R5, you can see it's just going to smooth everything out and we're going to start getting these kind of grainy or chunky elements on the model, which isn't really what we want. But using these new options here, we can actually come in and start, you know, just polishing by features. And if I just go to solo here, you can see that with the features or the groups, it's only going to polish the individual polygroups of the model. So basically, if I just do this features once, you can see it's going to take these blue and just smooth along the blue and keep the edge line 
between this polygroup and this other polygroup. So what this allows you to do is kind of smooth out your features to get that roundness back, but it doesn't destroy all that nice sculpting or all the nice kind of edging and stuff that the uh, group loops established. So you can run this a few times. If you find that the Polish by Features is going too slow, you can check this box over here. And so this will give you a larger kind of polishing, and this will give you a more smaller polishing. So if you're you know, having to slide this a bunch of times, uncheck this box over here, and then when you do your polish, um, it should go a little faster. So that just cleaned up that entire area of those borders. So I'm going to go back and kind of see that looks all nice and clean. And we're going to do the same thing with the actual uh, webbing as well. First, I'm going to come in and actually inflate this a little bit. So I'm just going to go to B, which opens up my brush palette. I'm going to choose I, which um, isolates by anything starting with the letter I. And then I'm just going to choose the inflate brush here. And so I'm just going to come in and kind of just inflate this curl here just a little bit. And you can see it's doing that same kind of effect you saw if it just did the normal polish, but that's okay. Because we'll do the polish by features here again and kind of get that back to where it was. So I can just kind of come through and enlarge some of these areas where it looks a little bit thin. Because if we were to print this out, it would, uh, as an actual piece of jewelry, you wouldn't want stuff too thin. So let's come through and do that quick. And then now we're just going to run Polish by Features, and we're actually going to turn that circle off. And so you start getting your kind of form back where it was. So go back to our thing here. You can see we have some overlapping where these are actually touching the borders. So we can come through now and kind of do that really quick. So we're just going to go to the brush menu again, hit B. We're going to isolate by the letter M, and we're going to grab the Move Brush. So right there. And now our symmetry is still on. So what this means is now if we come here and just move this piece, it's actually going to update across all of them. So that's almost exactly what we wanted to do. So now we can kind of make sure that all these are kind of joining up on the actual surface here. And getting that kind of overlap effect that we saw on the actual piece of jewelry. So something like this. So that looks pretty good. And you can tweak these as much as you want. And if stuff starts going crazy, um, you can still always go back and polish by these polygroups again, which will kind of clean them up some. So if you come over here and do polish by features again, it will kind of streamline them back out. So there you go. So that's the, the basis of um, kind of using panel loops to generate this open kind of framework. And once again, I think I'm actually going to start pulling some of these in as well because they got a little too much sticking out. I kind of want some of them to be in the frame now. I was looking a bit too bit crazy there. <clears throat> and if you want to make it more complex too, you can come up here to this actual group here and we can duplicate that really quick. And then select the new one and come down to deformation and go to rotate. Try Y. And you can actually rotate you know that duplicated one and get another layer of this kind of uh, effect going on. This looks like a little bit too much, but um you can now play with you know different kind of layering of these actual loops here to get a more complex design just by looping your one tool in, or uh, duplicating your one tool and then uh, positioning it on top of the other. So you can, still, you can start getting some pretty complex shapes out of this and make some really intricate open kind of design work on your model. This one's getting a little bit too crazy with that duplication tool, so I'm just going to go over here and turn it off. And I'm actually going to move these back in. Um, earlier I was switching between tools without going to the subtool uh, menu as well. To do that you just hold alt and then click on the tool you want and it'll switch. So if I was on the border and I wanted to switch back to the actual uh, lattice work here, just hold alt and click and it should switch back to that subtool. So one little quick way to kind of bounce back and forth um, between a lot of subtools. And I actually come in and just gonna pull these back down some because it was getting I'm losing this border that I worked so hard to kind of gain and 
I'm just kind of losing it into the background here. So I'm going to clean that up a little bit and enlarge some of these loops here. Once again, you can spend tons of time kind of finessing the actual loop patterns you generate. So I'm not going to stay too much on these. So we've got a few more parts to generate, so we're done with the pendant here. So something like that. So that looks better. I still have uh, some thick areas I want to kind of get rid of. And I think this design would look a little bit better if it was asymmetrical, like the actual reference. Um, but for time's sake, I just kept the actual symmetry on and used the radial symmetry to my advantage. And we're going to smooth this one time just to get some of the edges out. So I'm just going to go here and divide. And then I'm going to go down to the Polish by Features again and just do that once to end up with this kind of design now. So that looks pretty good. So we have a few more things to do. I'm going to turn this gem into a double sided object quick to give it more of that kind of gem look. And then we're going to add the actual. Uh, parts that attach to the uh, chain.